Jazakumullah khairan, Sidi Faridun and Hosai uh, for your very pertinent points. Um, I'd like to add another layer onto uh, the, the incredible points that were mentioned. And this comes from a place of many conversations that I've had with teenagers and adolescents um, and young adults over the past, I would say, seven years. One thing that I would say that having a tranquil and serene home comes down to is having emotionally regulated parents. And this is a very large area that, you know, parents from the previous generation didn't have the luxury of really investing in. And this is a conversation that I have with many adolescents, is providing the perspective of the parent who is coming to the United States from another country, not speaking the language of this country. And there are many unknowns of being in this country. And of course, naturally, all of this change comes with a lot of stress, right? And a lot of anxiety and a lot of uh, turbulence, I guess you could say. And so navigating all of these changes and trying to make a home for, their, for the family, right? The mother and the father coming together and trying to make a home for the family, while also trying to maintain balance and stability within their marriage which is a whole other thing, right, on, on its own. And then trying to parent children in a country that you're not very familiar with and that you're not necessarily aligned with the values within the culture of this country, right, in, in some sense. And when I speak about values, I'm really speaking about moral standards, right, morality. Dr. Uh, Russell Barkley is a well-known, he's a renowned researcher on, on ADHD. And there are many theories about ADHD that I'm not even gonna get into because there are way too many factors to consider. But he states that a really big problem with parenting and, and raising children in order to have a tranquil home, that starts with being a couple and then it transcends into uh, a home that has children, perhaps, but not, not every couple will have children. That's another thing to consider is he talks about this concept of parents being shepherds and not engineers. And where we go wrong as parents is when we try to play the role of engineers and we don't realize that we are just shepherds. And this is very critical to understand because all that we can do as parents is provide the pasture within which our children will graze, essentially. We get to decide how we live our lives. We get to decide where we go, who to let into our homes, which is a sacred space. We get to decide how we talk to one another and how we engage with each other. We get to decide how we regulate ourselves as parents, because emotions are at times we call, for children, we call them big feelings. But guess what? Adults also have big feelings, and adults also have tantrums. And sometimes those tantrums are very ugly. If the parent never learned through modeling from their own parents how to regulate their own selves, and how to remain calm, and how to remain composed, and how to not take out my frustrations, my stress, my worries, the things that I'm concerned about, on my children. Because someone within that family has to be the adult. But what happens is a lot of the adolescents that you'll meet have become parentified children. They are the ones who feel like they are running the household because the parent is not acting like an adult in the sense of emotional regulation. They don't know how to fully regulate their nervous system, right? Because there's the mind and then there's the nervous system. And if there's been a lot of pain that an adult has gone through, that is as a result of ibtilaat, as a result of, like Sidi Feridun was saying, trials and hardships and difficulties, but you never really processed those events that have happened to you. You don't really know how to make sense of them. 
You don't know why, you know, Allah has decreed this for you, right? And you may never know. That's not our job to understand or negotiate, right? The terms of our existence. We didn't create ourselves. But people need to make meaning out of what happens to them. Narrative development is a huge aspect of what I do. Helping people come to terms with the pain that they have experienced. And a lot of the time, it's pain that they have experienced at home. Not from strangers outside of their family. It's pain that they have experienced as a result of not being seen. Like Sister Rasai was saying, not, not being heard. Their needs are not being met. Because also, I think the parents love their children. However, they don't know how to express that love in a way that is perhaps healthy because they never learned how to honor their own needs. So here is the parent, you know, stressed out, uh, under a lot of pressure, you know, having to meet a lot of demands. And on top of that, I have to maintain a relationship with my spouse. And then on top of that, I have to take care of these children and make sure they're fed, taken care of, nurtured, everything else is, is, is you know, provided for them. And something's got to give because that is a lot of pressure. And here in the US, we don't necessarily always have a village, right? Unless you create a village for yourself and your family. And Dr. Leonard Sachs talks about this in his books. And I really encourage every parent to read his books because he has, his values are very aligned with our values. And he talks about that you create a bubble, literally a bubble for you and your family in which you raise your children, if you have children, you raise your children together because we have similar values. And if my child goes out of line, my child may not necessarily want to listen to me as a parent, but maybe my friend who's a family friend can step in and have a relationship with the child and advise the child lovingly. However, there has to be a receptivity, right, for the advice. So having this conception in our minds of how to be parents and what it means to be parents. Just like every prophet was a shepherd first, before prophecy. Because a lot of things happen when you're a shepherd. Your flock isn't necessarily going to want to listen and abide by your instructions. However, you have to learn how to be gentle. You have to learn patience. And when we talk about sabr, we think that sabr means just patience. But actually, it's a compounded word that means a lot of different things. It means endurance. It means perseverance. It means steadfastness, right? Amongst several other things. And when you bring all of those together, patience is just one portion of what sabr means. But you learn sabr. And essentially, what you're actually learning is how to regulate yourself when things don't go my way. Because they are individuals of their own. I can't control them. My job is not to control them. Whenever there is control or coercion, you're going to find them going in the opposite direction. So a lot of people will say, I don't want to be at home. I would rather actually be somewhere else. And that is the most heartbreaking thing, is because we want our children to be at home with us. We want them to listen to our stories, our narratives. We don't want other narratives infiltrating their minds, because one of the main things that I research is postmodernism. This is what my dissertation is on, and how it leads toward, towards states of fragility and not resilience. And there are many traces of postmodernism everywhere around us. Right? And postmodernism, if you'd like to have an idea of what it is, Foucault, right, who is a French theorist, if, if you want to call him that, one of his statements is that he says, you know, my job is not to be right or wrong. I'm not concerned with being right or wrong. So there's no criterion. But my job is to be interesting. So as human beings, we just need to be interesting. But we're not concerned with being right or wrong. And we're not concerned with authority. So religion, leaders, we're not concerned with them, right? And what they have to say. So overthrowing, overthrowing the patriarchy, right? 
dismantling all of the dominant discourse that exists in our society that serve as anchors, right, that relate to gender, that relate to how you feel about things and how you view the world, it dismantles all of that. So what you're actually doing is I'm removing all of the anchors for our teenagers. And this becomes an extremely dangerous playing field. And then the parents come in and the parents are trying to control. They're not realizing that I just need to be a shepherd and provide the pasture and control the environment, but let them be who they are, honor who they are, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created them to be, instead of constantly trying to change them by projecting my own needs onto the child and wanting them to be something other than what, what they are, what they're meant to be. Now, there's a research study done by one, a fellow anteater, UCI anteater, um, that I went to UCI with, Othman Omarji, Dr. Othman now. And he led a research study for Yaqeen Institute that talked about why adolescents are leaving Islam. And the main thing that he talked about were that there are soft doubts and there are hard doubts. Everyone has soft doubts. At some point in your life, you've doubted things about, about the faith and you've gotten responses for them that made sense to you, that infused you with a sense of purpose and meaning, that kept you steadfast. That was your why. You understand your why. You're connected to it. You know why you do what you do. However, with postmodernism and modernity in general, you're not really connected to your why. You actually don't know why you're doing, why you're praying. A lot of people tell me, well, it doesn't, I don't really feel anything, right? Same thing with fasting. They don't understand the purpose behind it. So in addition to understanding this concept that we as parents are shepherds, another thing that we have to understand is that societal, the current of society is based on this notion that it's short-term gain right, and long-term loss. But what we focus on as a society is short-term gain. So whatever feels good, do it, right? Whatever impulses you feel, act upon them. Be who you are. You do you. All of these different messages that are all over social media, and this is exactly what is entering their mind and starting to mess with their thoughts, right? Well, maybe I just need to be who I am. So if I'm having certain feelings, I should just listen to those feelings without understanding nafs al-shaytan and nafs al-rahman and the role that both play in dictating you know, the direction that you take in life. So really understanding this, this concept that parents are shepherds, emotional regulation, right? We have to be able to regulate our own emotions. And this is something that's very often done in counseling. Right, psycho-spiritual counseling, I'm not talking about secular counseling, which can be very different. And something that if I'm composed and I can control myself, I am modeling for my child how to control themselves in the tidal waves of life when they hit. Because they will hit, it's inevitable. But if they've viewed me and, and learned from me through observational learning, like Albert Bandura talks about, he talks about observational learning. Children learn by watching you. For the first decade of their life, all they really have is you. They have no choice. So if all they're seeing is a dysregulated nervous system, an adult who, when they get upset, they yell at them. They force them to do things they don't want to do, and they're not being heard. So like Hussai was saying, they also are leaders, in a sense. We have to listen to them. But we're shepherds, we are guiding them. I'm providing the lanes on the road so that they don't swerve in the wrong direction and go too far. That will lead them astray. I'm there to like nurture them back and bring them back lovingly, right? Because I'm able to, again, stay composed. And I'm aligned with my values and my principles. I act from a place of principle, not based on how I feel and what I want to do or not do. So I think this is, this is really key in, in just keeping in mind that our faith is about long-term gain 
and perhaps in this dunya, short-term loss. And we have to be able to explain this. You're going you're gonna to perceivingly lose some things. You might, you might lose some fun, you might lose some opportunities, but were they actually beneficial opportunities in the long term? You may lose some popularity and fame. You may not be in the spotlight, but that's not what we desire anyways. Right? Because if we're people of principle, it's about what Allah thinks of us. And where my standing is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the akhirah, and this is exactly what I'm talking about, is installing this mindset into your family's minds. It's like a filtration system to seek out long-term gain. With Ramadan coming, teaching your child everything that you're going to gain at the end of this month, experientially, and having many conversations with them about what it is that they're gaining. And this is connecting them to their why. Right? And with that, I will stop here so that we can hear from others.